Hey guys, it's Tuesday, January 9th. I got some pimple patches on, so if it looks silly there, ignore it. I think the first thing I'm gonna do is send out an email to Madeira. I have phoned them. I phoned them yesterday morning and left a voicemail with the customer service person, but I'm gonna also just send an email because it's a tale as old as time. They overcharged me for the shipping yet again. I always select their cheapest shipping option at checkout, which is UPS Ground, but since I'm in Canada, it's technically called UPS Standard, and so I request UPS Standard in the notes section, and I said, please send via UPS Standard, do not send Express, and they sent it Express, <laughs> which, by the way, cost over 200 US dollars just for the shipping fee. Why? <laughs> It's more and more every time, I swear. It should be like 30 some dollars for the shipping. But of course, they don't show you the shipping charge at checkout, they just charge you later. And they consistently charge me for the wrong shipping type. I thought we had this problem solved after like speaking with their customer service rep and like kind of getting the lowdown of everything. I thought this was going to be solved going forward, <laughs> but apparently not. So I'm chasing down that money. Oh, I'm chasing down that money. <laughs> I'm actually just gonna try calling again. If I can't get through to the person whose extension I have, I'll just Thank you for calling run it through without the extension. Hi, do you reach Karen Lewin? Okay, yeah, no, no response. I'll just go without the extension. It's possible she's on holiday or something, so that's why I kind of want to just try. You hold to speak with a customer service representative. Watch instructional videos. Um, because I've had this issue in the past and so I was told to make an order note saying to send it UPS standards So I did that and it still was sent Express worldwide Yes. Order some scotch tape. <laughs> Because like if I go on the UPS website and I put in your guys' information to ship to myself from your warehouse, it works. So maybe there's something wrong with like the software. Because I just don't, I want to be able to place future orders, but I can't if it's going to cost that much in shipping every time. Yeah, I do understand that. Um, I, other than that information I just gave you, that's I mean, like I said, I spoke to the warehouse manager. He said that's the only way he has an option of shipping to that address in Canada. Otherwise, the system that he has on his end just won't print a label. Um, so I don't know um, if I can take down your name and phone number and have... Well, could we at the very uh, least... Name. Could I at the very least be refunded then? Because... It was put through as express without my authorization since I had just requested UPS standard. Um, so it was like a surprise yeah. charge of $200. Yeah. Let me take down your name and number. Um, my manager's in a meeting right now, but I'm going to take down your name and number and have her call you when she gets back in. Okay. okay. 
Okay. Um, what's your name? Okay, perfect. I will have you call her. Call. I will have her call you as soon as she gets back. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Like, I just don't understand you can only send UPS Express. Like, that's just... Something's got to be wrong with how they have their software set up. Like, but to say you can only ship Express, it's just not true. It could be the software forcing them, but, like, it's... N <laughs> I could try requesting USPS possibly again. But they said that you... No, but they said that's the only option. Because I was going to say, I've tried requesting USPS instead of UPS, but they still just shipped at UPS. So I think it's... That's literally the only option showing up, even though I have other options to choose from at checkout. It's so weird. I just... Because <laughs> last time this happened, I was like, well, what's the solution? Like, what should I do going forward? And they said I could just put an order note saying to ship it that specific method. Which is what I did this time, but there's some kind of disconnect with the warehouse. Maybe I should just start ordering from Canso. It's more expensive for the cones, but then there's not this like run around every time. I do have to special order it from Canso, so I have to email them like what I want and they'll send me a PayPal invoice, which works, it works. <laughs> it's $15 per cone through Canso, 15 Canadian, and it's $7 US for the cones from Madeira. And they're both Madeira brand thread. And those are really my only two options. So, I mean, we'll see how this goes. I mean, if they won't refund me for the shipping, I'm definitely charging back. But, like, if they literally could only send UPS Express, then I just can't use them anymore. Like, like I've given many chances, and if it's not going to work out, it's not going to work out. Anyway, let's get this order placed for the tape. Now I'm seeing I have an email from Shopify saying that I have to authenticate and add a DMARC record to continue sending emails from my domain. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> is this is so going over my head. I think I now realize how to add the DMARC record. I don't know how to create a DMARC record. I figured out the C name stuff. I had to copy and paste a bunch of stuff from Shopify over to my domain provider and had to use like a million authenticator text messages to do each one. <laughs> oh my god. I have to set up SPF and DKIM before enabling DMARC and have to wait at least 48 hours after setting those up to set up the DMARC. What the fuck? What if I just don't do this? <laughs> It just means like when people get an email, like an order confirmation email, it just shows us being from like a Shopify email. And you know what? Maybe I'm fine with that. <laughs> this is going way over my head. Your order confirmations will be sent from no reply at shopifyemail.com. That's fine by me. So anyway, now moving on, I'm gonna order some DTF transfers from various places <laughs> and see their quality. Cause I guess DTF prints can vary wildly in how they Feel? I feel like the ones I've tried out so far, those samples I got, they were, kind of felt a bit papery or plasticky. I don't know. I, I mean, th I think that's just what they're supposed to feel like, but I've seen people say that really good transfers blend into the clothing more and are softer. And I've seen people recommend Ninja transfers, which is like the first thing that comes up when you Google DTF transfers, but they are based in the US. And so I'm scared of what the shipping costs are going to be and import fees. So I still want to try them out though, just to see what it's like so I know what a good transfer should feel like. And also I just want to see how much it's going to cost me. <laughs> and then I have three other Canadian businesses that I'm going to try ordering from. This one looks very user friendly with their interface. This one you have to email. And I'm like, Oof, I don't want to have to email to place an order. I have to do that for certain products, but like, I want to be able to just upload my file and place the order. <laughs> But that's local, like Calgary local, so. Hmm. So I gotta make up my file in Photoshop, although different websites have different gang sheet sizes. This one's 22 by 24 inch. This one's 22 by 39 inch. <laughs> this one is 22.5. So yeah, I'll have to make up the files and send those off. I'm also gonna do a little test because I wanna know 
how well my hand-drawn illustrations are gonna look as a DTF transfer. Cause would I be better off sticking with flat color with some cell shading and a little juicy highlight? Or will it still look okay if it's like full color pencil texture type illustration? And someone brought up in my live stream test that the Luna Moth is perfect for testing that because I do have the flat color version of Luna Moth and then I have my pencil version of Luna Moth. So I can throw some of those into a document make my gang sheet, which is the big role of DTF film, and send them off to these various companies and see what they look like. <laughs> Flat color digital Luna Moth is very tiny. That's as big as it is. And I'm not gonna make it bigger because it's just gonna get pixelated. I realized strawberry is also good for flat versus color. So I'm doing some of that. I added the little bun bun badge because I worked on those yesterday to add a couple new variants that have sparkles around them for the higher tier memberships and Twitch subs and just fill in the space with some Bailey J logos or some white ones here and here. It's hard to see. <laughs> and then some flowers, just, just fill in the space. So that's a 12 inch by 22 and a half. I'll have to tweak it a little bit for each order, but there's the first one. This place has free samples, but I just want to see what mine are going to look like. <laughs> So one of the ones I'm ordering has everything on there once. This one's got everything twice. This one has everything three times because they're small 11 by 15 size. I just couldn't fit that many of these on there at this same size. And so I just went up a size. <laughs> There's gonna be a lot. And I feel like this is a true way to compare companies too is by ordering the same designs. If I just get their free samples, it's harder to compare. Well, this is interesting. DTF Prince Canada and Ninja Transfers have the exact same gang sheet builder. <laughs> this one I'm not gonna order from yet, unless I'm dissatisfied with what I receive from the other places, although I'm sure it's fine. They don't even tell me the width of the gang sheet. It says six to 30 feet, but what's the width? Like there's just not enough information on their website. Okay, transfers are ordered. Ninja Transfers was surprisingly expensive. <laughs> For a two foot by two foot gang sheet, it was $48 plus shipping. The one from Tone Atelier was like two feet by over three feet. So 50% more, but it was $25. So $25 versus 48. It's way more affordable and it's in Canada. The shipping price was good too. It was only $6 shipping. That is a lot lower than I was expecting. So we'll see quality wise though, when I get them. I'm really hoping Tonatelier works out because that one just, I like the website and it's a Canadian shop. I like the pricing, <laughs> so. I think DTF Prince Canada was even cheaper. It's the cheapest option of all three. And I was not expecting that. I was not expecting the Canadian companies to have cheaper prices than the American companies. So fingers crossed for the Canadian ones. <laughs> just made some food and now I'm back down here. The order is officially made for the sketchbooks like being drafted. I have to make the payment. I'm just requesting them to split it into two so I can pay by credit card. But then these sketchbooks will officially be paid for and production will officially start. I'm not disclosing what the Halloween design is yet, but I'll show you the Luna Moth one. The Luna Moth sketchbook will look something like this, which is the design as you know it, basically. <laughs> it's just square version instead of more rectangular for the sweatshirts. And I played around with different things like moving Luna Moth down and having a third moon on the top. But ultimately I like just the two moons and some sparkles around it. The Halloween one, I'm curious to see what it's going to look like because it's higher detail. So we'll see. But within a couple months I should have a photo of what the embroidery looks like. And then once I approve that then the books can be made. So exciting times. It feels so weird ordering some when I just kind of recently got in a shipment, but at the same time, it's been like two or three months since I got in my last shipment. So it's a little scary. Really, I should be like submitting new designs the second I receive some. I should be ordering new ones, but <laughs> it's just too much. It's hard to commit to designs that early. It's like, I'm still excited about the current order. I'm not thinking about the next order. Anyway, I gotta get away from this computer. This has been just like a sitting at the computer day. And by the way, I have not heard back from Madeira. It's now past five, so they, I'm not gonna hear from them. <laughs> At least not today. <laughs> I wanna get in another small doodle like I did in the last vlog. Everything's sitting there, set up for my last filming session. <laughs> I 
and then I can tidy up a bit because tomorrow's vlog is going to be sorting through all the Copic markers, figuring out what refills I want to buy and just like a Copic marker refresh. I can refill some of them, figure out what new colors I want to buy because I want to fill out the collection, but also I have these anniversary markers which just get all crusty and I've tried reviving them in the past. It's too much and they just crystallize again so something's just faulty with them and so I want to replace all those anniversary markers with new ones. And there's a marker I could not find when I was making some art. It's just gone. Wait a minute maybe that's what I should work on. I never finished my sunset art. But anyway I looked forever for this one orange. It is just not in here. It does not exist. This is not it either. This is my fluorescent one that I was using as a highlighter, but like it's just gone. And so stuff like that I need to know so I can order a replacement, but also where the heck did it go? Let's move this aside. I'll put these away and then I'll bust out the ones I was using for the sunset art. didn't break it any more than it already was. There was already this chunk of missing, so woohoo, it survived. <laughs> now where is that artwork? Where is it? Probably in here. Probably. Uh-huh. Were the houses a mistake? Are the houses bringing down the quality of this? <laughs> There's really not a whole lot left to do unless I get real crazy with it. I need to finish adding texture to the water. Erase this so it's less intense and then just go back over areas, see if there's any extra I want to add. Cause it goes from heavier pencil detail to lighter, but also the colors are just getting lighter. So I'm like, okay, am I gonna add more pencil down here? I don't know. Do the houses need a little bit more? I don't want too much attention drawn to them texture wise. Cause I want the sky to still be the focal point, but the houses just look a little silly. Uh, I don't know. You know what? I think I might know what happened to my marker. Oh God, and I think it might actually be two markers. Before we moved, I was trying to clean up the place and like undo some of the damage we had done, like take screws and nails out of the wall, fill the holes. I filled some holes, but never got around to all of them and never got a chance to like sand them and paint over. So I didn't have it in pristine condition, although they did give me my full damage deposit back. <laughs> Don't ask me how, but um, one of the things I was doing is the hardwood floor in the living room, it had a couple spots where it was a little scraped up, like little gouges, just small, but I was coloring it in with my Copic markers because the gouge went below the stain and it was an orange stain. And I'm wondering if that's where my Copic marker went because I was using it to color in those couple spots. But now I'm wondering, well, was it just the orange or did I have like an orangey brown too? Like, am I missing one of my brown markers? So I'm wondering if that's where the orange marker ended up because I didn't have any counter space left. All the furniture was wrapped up and things are being hauled out by the moving people. And I was doing some last minute stuff. And I know I forgot, some, or I suspect I forgot some screw bits for my drill on the windowsill in my art room because I was using the windowsill as a spot to put stuff. And now I'm wondering if I also left one or two Copic markers on the windowsill. Arrgh. Is that what I did? Did I leave Copic markers behind? I left my mark behind my marker. <laughs> okay, I don't know how I feel about this erasing. <laughs> I like that it's lighter, but I'm probably gonna have to go back in and just define some of the lines a bit. Cause now it just looks smudgy. Okay, there's the updated sky. <laughs> well, blue part of the sky anyway. The non-cloudy part. And now for the water. My goal for this was to finish it before the Christmas break, but <laughs> that never happened. <laughs>
Okay, I think I'm going to call it done. Here's the updated water down there. I added shadow to the ground behind the houses because if the sun's on that side, the houses would have cast shadows back here. So I think that helped them not feel so out of place. It does merge them a little bit into the ground. It's like, where does the house stop and the ground start? But <laughs> that's okay. And I did a little more up in the clouds to add more texture. So yeah, I feel like it looks really great up close. Like look at the dark purple cloud there. I love when it's dark with some light pencil on top. Oh, so good. But a lot of the colors are light. So they mostly just have darker pencil on them but that's what it looks like when I'm up close like this I'm like yeah look at the clouds and you can see the texture when I see the whole thing I'm like well eh. it's a bit big for my scanner it's a huge sheet of paper so I'm going to do the half and half scan and then I use photoshop's photo merge feature to combine the two halves I have now signed it and then I scanned this half again after signing it and now back in your drawer all right, now to get ready for tomorrow's stream. I'm printing off a new Copic chart, and it's slightly different than the one I've been using. It's pretty similar, but this is one made by someone on Reddit, David Book Pro. That's their username, but it's just nice and clean. It's got a little square to fill in if you have the refill for that marker. And the original chart has icons on it to show if that color is available as a chow or a Copic original. So the square is the original, the circle is the chow. Oh, and the little oval is Copic wide. So it's handy for knowing what colors are available and what marker styles, but I just buy sketch these days and the Copic sketch are available in all the colors. So I'm just gonna print this off, it's cleaner and it's got the little refill check boxes. I did change one thing here in Photoshop. I hid all the text information in the corner. I guess I could keep the word Copic, but meh, we don't need it. This one didn't have it. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, that's the stuff. I'm just cleaning up and I realized something. <laughs> I left one of the stampers in the box when I made the craft kit for my nieces. Oop. Tidying's done, so I think everything's ready for tomorrow. G double zero G twenty G zero five. Interesting. G ninety four is left untouched, but is it in the wrong slot? It might be in the BG slot. We might be missing G ninety four. BG seventy. Oh, I do have BG seventy. Wait. <laughs> This color right here, I have it, but it does look colored in actually. It looks slightly darker than this. I have this color. I probably just never use it because I think I don't have it. It's so pale. Favorite Disney villain. <laughs> the first to come to mind was Frollo. No. Okay. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, that's 91. <laughs> I was like, how come I have two completely different YG 61s? <laughs> This is a 91. Oh God, help me. We're missing Y17. Maybe that is one of the ones I was looking for recently. Wait, then maybe it's an, a yellow we're missing, not an orange. Well, then maybe I didn't leave that in Vancouver. I thought I was missing an orange, but yeah, I'm missing a yellow. Oh, Lordy. There's literal chunks of dust, Copic dust. Ooh, this one's great. Y35 is great. I was just thinking Bailey won't really throw them out. She'll reuse them for something. <laughs> I'm just gonna hoard them. They're gonna stay in here and they're gonna sit on my shelf. <laughs> Listen, it's a collector's. If these were regular sketch markers, I would probably chuck them. But like, Y'all are horny. this is the collector edition. T9, just like T9 texting. <laughs> We got some missing pens. Yeah, I don't have every single color. And there's two colors that I had that I no longer have. Like, where are they? <laughs> where did they go? I don't know. <gasps> oh my God, I just had an idea. They might be in the embroidery room. Cause you know what G94 and Y17 look like? Strawberry. Like maybe I was, cause I remember I was like testing and coloring threads in in case there was like a bit of bobbin showing or something. 
<laughs> to the embroidery room, bro. Yes, I did not leave Eddie in Vancouver. Yes. They're like my babies. This is not a Christian company at all. They're in the embroidery room and they're sitting on the counter, like right in front of Christian, like right at the base of his monitor. <laughs> ah! Oh, today's a good day. So that's a little taste of how the stream went. If you didn't catch it live and want to rewatch it, it does save to both my YouTube channel and my Twitch channel. On the YouTube channel, you just have to go to the live tab to see my past live streams. It went, it went really well. It was a pretty long stream and I did not make as much progress as I thought I would, but I feel like that happens every time with a stream. I'm like, this is not enough content to fill the whole stream. And then I don't even finish what I set out to do. Oh, I have this sitting here. I never showed this. I went to a couple antique stores when my dad and his girlfriend were here for Christmas. And I came across this. I just thought it was really cute. It could be good for product photography or something. It's a little piece of mesh cloth and it has ribbon woven throughout and the colors are just so Bailey J. So I had to get it. <laughs> okay, this order for Julian. Mail cat notepad and a dotted strawberry sketchbook. Really need to get a freebie sticker designed because I'm still just doing these as the freebie. And if someone orders that sticker sheet in their order, I just give them something else. I might have to fold some boxes while I pack orders because I have hardly any folded because <laughs> I was running out of every box type. Okay, this is gonna go underneath because I don't like to put anything directly on top of the embroidery side. Although sometimes I do this, which I could also do right now. <laughs> Flip it over. For Gabby, two little Ducky Weekly planner pads, two of the notepads, two witch hat notepads. I only have the one here, I gotta grab some more. And two witch hat sketchbooks. So let's see. Flat packet like this. Oh, I don't know if that's all gonna fit in one of these. Actually, this might work because the ducky ones are slightly smaller than the strawberry ones. And right now it is minus 30 degrees Celsius, feels like minus 42. An easy conversion to Fahrenheit is minus 40 is minus 40 for both. So minus 43 Celsius is probably like minus 45 or 46 Fahrenheit. Yeah, Friday night overnight it says it'll be, feels like minus 49. So yay, even Saturday morning, minus 48. So <laughs> chilly after our nice warm December. We're getting some cold now. <laughs> Oh my God, this is not even the right box. Oh no, <gasps> I need to go one deeper, but I actually didn't buy any more for one deeper because I rarely use that box size. This is a two inch depth. I have a four inch depth, but I stopped buying the three inch depth because it took me a long time to get through them. And the only reason I got through them is because I was using them for sweatshirts, but the sweatshirts barely fit. This is why I bought the four inch depth ones so that they would work well for the sweatshirts. But now I need the box I don't have. When you have rectangle and square, it always gets a little tricky. I'm gonna have to do one of the four inch depth ones and then just stuff it with void fill. <laughs> Big, biggest mailer I've gotten. I have regular boxes that are bigger than this, but this is my biggest mailer. Literature mailer as they're called. Okay, we need a sticker and thank you card. And we, <laughs> we have a lot of space to fill in here. Oh. I have paper I can crinkle up that I reuse from my sketchbook shipment. And then I keep any bubble wrap I get. So it's all reused secondhand bubble wrap. I mean, maybe let's put a teeny sprinkle of crinkle though, just for a little something after they remove the paper, make it look a little cute. <laughs> Okay, those are snug. There's still space on top though, so I'm gonna try to just, I might just put this here. I'm just paranoid the bubble wrap's gonna leave a dent on the sketchbooks or something. Oh, 
It's hideous, but it works. Where are you? Oh, it's catching on one of the paper balls. <laughs> I'm just gonna do one extra little, just in case, strip. Ooh, there you go, Gabby. I finally just got a call back from Madeira, although they're gonna call me back again. <laughs> I just sent them an email. I honestly don't even know if they read it before they called me. Maybe it was a complete coincidence because they called me like 60 seconds after I hit send on that email. Maybe they saw it right away and were like, ooh. Because <laughs> I tried calling twice now. And so I was like, well, let me just send something via email because then I have something in writing if I have to <laughs> issue a charge back. But I think this is just going to be the end of the line of ordering from them because I don't think there's really going to be a solution because something's wrong with their software that's not letting them send via UPS standard, which is funny because like I order stuff using UPS standard from the US all the time. Like even those transfers, those DTF transfers I just ordered early in the vlog, those came from Ninja transfers in the US and I could select UPS standard. I feel like we're at an impasse where like, they're not gonna really be able to help me. So I think I just have to order from Canso, even though it's gonna be more expensive. Look at all these lovely boxes Christian folded for me, woo. I can't fit all the box sizes up there, so I gotta decide which ones get to go up there. Okay, we'll do all the square ones and the VHS box as I call it and then we can fit one of the rectangle boxes and I think I'll go with the flattest and I don't go any further that way because I can't really reach because the counters hitting my belly <laughs> I'm too short I was saying in my last vlog how the person I get my calendars from is not doing a 2024 calendar and I love her art so much I'm just gonna reuse my old calendars because I've kept them all and I've been thinking of reusing them, and I'm like, well, no, as long as she keeps making new ones, I'll buy them. Now it's time to reuse. So <laughs> I technically could use the 2018 calendar up until the end of February. That was not a leap year, so the rest of the calendar is not going to line up. But I figured why don't you stick with one, and I can maybe just tape in. Oh god, this is going to be a bit small, but it could work if I just cut the side off. Let's see. Use my low-tack tape, although I kind of want to cut a little closer. There's some text still showing on the side. But then do I cut the other side to match? It might be too narrow. Okay, that's not a match, but I'm scared to cut too much. <laughs> okay, that's close enough match. Her aesthetic just goes so well with our kitchen area, because this hangs above our garbage can by like our little coffee nook by the pantry. I mean, two pieces of tape is probably enough. This 2017 calendar is so gorgeous. Like it might be one of my top faves of all her calendars. Ah. Jessica Rue is the artist. Gardening, love it, love it, okay. Hey, and then I can actually write on these. I just refuse to write on her calendars because so silly but they're just I like keeping them pristine they're basically a collector item for me at this point it's also I'm using the low tack tape we do not want to damage these oh wait I can't cover the hole well I could if I punch a new hole <laughs> the hole to hang it the hole is right on the dotted line so if I'm trying to cover oh but I don't want to cover those cute scissors well I'm gonna have to like, I might be best off just punching a hole if I don't want the dotted line showing at the bottom. This one might be a little bit big. This one might be a little bit small, but it should do the trick. Ah! Hey, Bailey, it's Karen. How are you? Good. Good. Sorry, I had to figure that out. I should have done it before I called you. That's okay.
demo customer. I'm gonna ask him for one seventy five fifty one hundred and seventy five dollars and fifty seven cents back. Okay. Uh, for shipping. Okay, perfect. So you are all set, my dear. I just put that paper in, and um, they should be sending that credit memo out to you, okay? Okay, thanks. All right, take care. Sorry about that. Have a great day. You too. Bye. Thanks. Bye-bye. <laughs> and that's the end of my Madeira journey. <laughs> I mean, I still have to order Madeira brand thread, but just not from Madeira USA. Putting the calendar on hold for a second. I'm helping Christian move some of this. We're taking the Luna Moth leftovers out of here and putting them in these nine bins. And then we're gonna get the strawberries out of these. These are kind of, they're not as tall, but they're deeper than the other bins. And so it can be hard to reach to the back. And since these have way more variants than the Luna Moth, it makes sense for the Luna Moths to be here. Cause then you're not like rooting to the back to find a particular variant. So yeah. Nine bins and we have nine sizes. Wow. Wait, why do we have four two XLs? We have one crew. We should have one crew, one hoodie, but we have one crew, three hoodie. You don't know how that happened. <laughs> And I don't think, oh, do we have a large? Oh, this is the large one, yeah. We're missing an XL, but I'm trying to remember what I've sent out for replacements for people. Like, I know I sent out a large crew, and then I gave my mom the large hoodie. So I knew we wouldn't have any spare larges. I must have sent an XL out or something. And since those are all the Luna Moths we have, they can just stay in these bins. But as we get more made, they can go in here. But they'll probably spill out into there too. <laughs> And that embroidery clip has real time speed. I'm gonna finish off this calendar and then I gotta get editing. So no more Copic stuff today. But thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.